Namaste children, I am Hari Prasad, your chemistry teacher. Children, today we will do the summary of analytical chemistry. In analytical chemistry, you have the identification of the cations present in a salt. Now for that, what we do? All these salt solutions, when it is treated with sodium hydroxide and ammonium hydroxide, you are going to get a precipitates. Based on the color of the precipitate, we try to identify the cation that is the positive ion present in the salt solution. For example, the first salt, ferrous sulfate, will produce FeOH twice, whose color is dirty green precipitate, and the cation is Fe2 plus. Now, FeCl3 will produce a precipitate of FeOH thrice, whose color is reddish brown, and the cation is Fe3 plus. In case of lead nitrate, it produces a precipitate of PbOH twice and the color of the precipitate is chalky white and the cation is Pb2 plus. In case of ZnSO4, it produces a gelatinous white precipitate of ZnOH twice and the cation is Zn2 plus. In case of copper sulfate, it produces a pale blue precipitate of CuOH twice and the cation is Cu2 plus. In case of calcium nitrate, it produces a, a white precipitate of CaOH twice and the cation is Ca2 plus. Now, all these precipitates, we have to check the solubility with respect to NaOH and as well as ammonium hydroxide. When it comes to FeOH twice, it is insoluble in NaOH and NH4OH and FeOH thrice also insoluble in both NaOH and ammonium hydroxide. In case of PbOH twice, it is soluble in NaOH and the product what you are going to get is sodium plumbite. In case of ammonium hydroxide, it is insoluble. That's why I have not put a cross here. So it is soluble, that's why I put a cross. Now when it comes to ZnOH twice, right, it is soluble in excess of sodium hydroxide and as well as excess of ammonium hydroxide. With sodium hydroxide excess, it forms sodium zincate and with ammonium hydroxide excess, it forms a complex salt tetraamine zinc sulfate. Now, in case of CuOH twice, it is insoluble in excess of sodium hydroxide and it is very much soluble in excess of ammonium hydroxide and the product is tetraamine copper sulfate whose color is deep blue or inky blue and this tetraamine zinc sulfate is a colorless. Now this white precipitate of CaOH twice is almost insoluble in sodium hydroxide and one more important thing calcium nitrate will not form any precipitate with ammonium hydroxide reason is the amount of OH minus what it produces it's very 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 less that's why no precipitate with ammonium hydroxide it forms white precipitate only with sodium hydroxide now children we will do the practicals of all these things okay children okay children now what we are going to do is that we have taken the salt solutions in different test tubes so to all the salt solutions i'm going to add sodium hydroxide just observe very carefully what is the color of the precipitate you are going to get when I add sodium hydroxide to all this test tubes containing salt solutions. Now the first test tube, just observe very carefully children. Observe, I am adding sodium hydroxide. Is there any change in the color? Observe, observe very carefully. Yes, what is the color of the precipitate children? Yes, we got a precipitate. Whose color is what children? What is the color? Dirty green. So going to the next test tube. Right. Yes. Here also we got a precipitate. What is the color of the precipitate children? Yes. It is reddish brown. Now coming to the next test tube. What is the color children? Yes. It is chalky white precipitate. Right. Now, coming to the fourth one, observe very carefully. 
What is the color? Yes, see, a jelly kind of a thing. That is gelatinous white precipitate. Now the next test tube. Yes, yes. Look at this beautiful pale blue precipitate. Now the next test tube. Observe very carefully. You got what precipitate? Observe, observe. Yes, you got a a white colored precipitate. Right, children. Now, what is the conclusion? A dirty green precipitate represents Fe2 plus, reddish brown Fe3 plus, chalky white Pb2 plus, gelatinous white Zn2 plus, pale blue Cu2 plus, and white precipitate it is Ca2 plus. Now, the next thing is we have to just check whether all these precipitates are soluble in excess of sodium hydroxide or not. So again, I will add sodium hydroxide to this one. Just observe very carefully. I have added. No, the precipitate is insoluble. Let me try with reddish brown precipitate. Now, this is also insoluble. So FeOH twice and FeOH thrice, both are insoluble in excess of sodium hydroxide. Let me try with this one, that is PbOH twice. Observe very carefully, children. Observe very carefully. Can you see something? Yes, see? The precipitate has completely dissolved. So what it has formed? It has formed sodium plumbite, which is colorless. So let me try with ZnOH twice. When I add excess of sodium hydroxide to ZnOH twice, observe what will happen. Yes, ZnOH twice is soluble in excess of sodium hydroxide. What is this product? It has formed sodium zincate. Now, let me try with CuOH twice, whether CuOH twice is soluble in excess or not. No, CuOH twice is insoluble and also this CaOH twice is insoluble. So conclusion from this one is only two precipitates are soluble in excess of sodium hydroxide. That is PbOH twice which forms sodium plumbite and ZnOH twice which forms sodium zincate. Is it clear children? Okay children, now what we are going to do is that again we have taken a different salt solutions. So to all this we are going to add the next solution that is ammonium hydroxide. Now this is the one which contains ferrous sulfate salt solution. So I'm adding ammonium hydroxide children. Yes, yes, you got a dirty green precipitate which indicates it has Fe2 plus. Now the next test tube that is ferric chloride absorb. On adding ammonium hydroxide, you got a reddish brown precipitate. It indicates the presence of Fe3 plus. Now to the next test tube, that is lead nitrate. When I add ammonium hydroxide, observe, you got a what precipitate? Chalky white precipitate of PbOH twice indicates the presence of Pb2 plus ion. Now the next salt solution that is zinc sulfate when i add ammonium hydroxide observe see you got a what is that gelatinous white precipitate of znoh twice indicates the presence of zn2 plus ion next a salt solution that is copper sulfate to that if i add what is that ammonium hydroxide i got a pale blue precipitate, 
right, of CuOH twice, which indicates the presence of Cu2 plus ion. Next is calcium nitrate. To that, when I add ammonium hydroxide, there is no formation of precipitate. Why there is no formation of precipitate? Reason is the concentration of OH minus ions is very less, so which is not sufficient to produce a precipitate of CaOH twice. Okay, so it will produce precipitate only with sodium hydroxide. Now, just children, we have to just check whether all these precipitates are soluble in excess of ammonium hydroxide or not. Now, let me add little more ammonium hydroxide to the dirty green precipitate. It is insoluble. To the reddish brown precipitate, that is also insoluble. So chalky white precipitate, no, that is also insoluble in excess of ammonium hydroxide. Let me try with gelatinous white precipitate that is Oh, I think it is soluble. Yes, let me add little more. Oh, it is disappearing. It is disappearing. The precipitate seems to be dissolving. Yes, the precipitate dissolved completely and it has formed a clear solution. What is this solution? This solution is nothing but tetraamine zinc sulfate which is colorless. Now to the CuOH twice I will add little more ammonium hydroxide. Oh what is this? Yes. We got a beautiful inky blue. Okay let me try little more. Let me add little more. Yes, yes, this is a beautiful inky blue, right? So, this inky blue solution is nothing but... So, out of these five precipitates, only two precipitates are soluble. One is ZnOH twice to form a colorless tetraamine zinc sulfate and another one is CuOH twice to form a uh, inky blue tetramine copper sulfate. I hope you have understood all these things. Okay, children. Okay, children. Let us move to the next thing. Children, zinc, PB and aluminium. These are the metals which are present above hydrogen in the activity series. When they are treated with hot concentrated alkalis like NaOH or KOH, you will get a salt and a hydrogen which burns with a pop sound. Now children, for example, let me take zinc. Zinc with sodium hydroxide produces sodium zincate and hydrogen, which is the lightest gas. And zinc with KOH produces potassium zincate and hydrogen. Similarly, lead and aluminium also produces a corresponding salts and hydrogen gas. Is it clear children? Children, can you expect a fish to live on land? No. In water? Yes. Possible. Can I expect to live in water? No. On land? Definitely possible. Children, uh, give me an example of a species which will live on land and as well as water. Yes, you are right. Frog. One more example. Not one more frog children. Crocodile. Now, these are the species which can live on land and as well as what? Water. That's why they are called as what children? Amphibians. Just like amphibians can live on land and as well as water, there are few metal oxides and hydroxides which can react with both acids and as well as bases. Those oxides and hydroxides are called as amphoteric oxides and amphoteric hydroxides like ZNO, PBO and AN2O3, ZNOH twice, PBOH twice and ALOH thrice. So these amphoteric oxides and hydroxides has the ability to react with both acid and as well as alkali to produce salt and water. For example, if you take ZNO, right, reacts with NaOH base to produce 
sodium, zincate and water. The same ZNO can react with acid HCl to produce ZNCl2 salt and water. So this clearly indicates that ZNO is a amphoteric oxide. I hope you have done like you have understood whatever I have done. Okay children, thank you very much. Namaste.